Hey, what's up guys? It's Joe from Gadgetry Tech, and today I'm gonna to talk about the Wicked Cushions freeze pads for the Nova lineup. So the same pad is used from the Nova One all the way to the Nova Pro. It's the Nova Wireless that has its own unique pad, and I covered that very in depth at a long review uh, posted previously. So if you're looking for that, I'll have a link in the description below. That's for the Pro Wireless. Now for the rest of the Nova lineup, you can use the same freeze pad across the board. And then these pads are actually a little bit less because of the way they're built. So they sell for $30. The all black version, which is on the Nova 7 right now, sells for $28. Now this was sent to me for review, so uh, thanks to Wicked Cushions for that. It won't affect uh, anything I say about the review, of course. If you've watched my previous content, you know that won't matter. Um, but I do wanna thank them, give credit where credit's due type thing. Now I will have links in the description below. The links will have uh, Amazon and the Wicked Cushion stored direct. That'll save you 15% off if you use those. Make sure you disable ad blocker if you go to Wicked Cushions, but I do have unique discount codes uh, for both. So visiting the site will get you some savings there. Just wanted to pass that along. Otherwise, feel free to buy it however you want. With that being said, I'm gonna talk about comfort, uh, my actual everyday usage, uh, real life experience. Then we'll talk about how it impacts sound quality, you know, the measurements, tuning, all that good stuff. So use the chapters below if you wanna save some time. I'm gonna try to condense this a little bit to make it easier and faster to uh, consume. So with that being said, let's dive in. Now Wicked Cushions has a lot of different pad design options just like they do on other models. That includes the 90s white, the 90s black, the black camo, the all black. You even have things like the Speed Racer, which I use on the Nova Pro Wireless and like. So there's different options. Now, is that gonna change your sound quality? No, it's really just a design preference. And some people might be looking at pads just to customize uh, the look of their headset, which is why I'm really glad they have the white because I have one pad on and off right now for my Nova One, but honestly, I wish they made the Pro Series in white because I love that look with that pad. It's such a good looking headset just by simply putting a little pattern on the pad. So um, if you don't care for any, any of the looks, you just want to upgrade because of the material or comfort, then they have that all black series, like I said, and it'll be a little bit cheaper. So let's talk about the basic composition and things that I noticed. So when I compare it, from the stock Nova pad. And I went with the Nova One pad because it's light and it's easier to see. They both have somewhat of an athletic fabric for what touches your ear. And that's great because that's gonna keep the sweat and moisture uh, buildup down on your ear. It's not sealing it like a leatherette. Now the Nova Pro, the more expensive wired version, which is right here, uh, that comes with the leatherette. So they're gonna get a little bit hotter. You'll definitely feel it more. Now typically these help with noise isolation that um, gives them a very consistent sound quality performance However, um, it runs warm at the expense of that. Now the freeze pads have slightly different dimensions of the standard Nova pad. And I think that's the most noticeable thing if you've used them for an extended period of time already. So you have a 62 millimeter peak height. The width or opening from front to back, if you will, on your ear is 40 millimeters and you have a depth of 26 millimeters. Compared to the standard Nova pad, which is a 58 millimeter height, 47 millimeter width, and 22 millimeter depth, it's a little bit different. The stock Nova pad has a little bit more width and the height isn't really a big deal. Yes, the freeze pad is slightly higher, but because this opens and has a wider taper, you're not gonna feel much of a height difference there unless you have exceptionally tall ears. Uh, the depth is actually comparable. Four millimeters difference between the two is not super noticeable. Um, but I just wanted to leave that out there. Now the stock Nova pads weigh about 26 grams as a set. And when you upgrade to the freeze, you're at about 70 grams. So you have a 42 gram increase of headset weight by upgrading to the freeze pads. Now, part of that is because it has a gel interior and the gel has a couple benefits. So it's very compliant. It's actually very easy to compress in a small area, which helps preserve the glasses comfort. So if you're worried about comfort for glasses, um, these are both great. I'm never, I'm not knocking the stock Nova pads. They're actually really good for glasses, but it is good to know that this isn't going to ruin that. They'll still be comfortable whether you have a thick frame or thin. I tried both. Um, but the gel interior filling. So what happens is when you put this on, especially if this is being stored at room temperature, you'll have a cooler sensation on your ear. A heavier pad has more thermal mass. So it's going to take a little bit longer to heat up. However, once they do heat up, it's not going to be a drastic difference over something like this. From there, the pad material is gonna make a difference on how breathable it is. So with that being said, the gels, they take longer to heat up, but they can get just as warm. It's not gonna be much of a difference. They also hold the heat just a little bit longer because of the thermal mass. 
So I wanna say that because you don't wanna store this right next to or on a gaming console or resting on top of your tower if you're a PC gamer, they're gonna warm up and they're gonna hold that heat so when you put that on, that cold sensation is gone. Just taking them off from room temp and putting your on your ears though, the comfort's great. And with both pads, I can wear these for a very long period of time. Comparable from the stock pad to the freeze, it's great. Compared to the Nova Pro pad, I like the freeze and even these pads much more, honestly. The Pro pad does get warm after a while. Now the other benefit of going with the gel pad with this material with the leatherette exterior, because it's only the sport fabric and what touches your ear, is a denser pad is going to isolate some noise better from your exterior sounds. So if you're playing in a noisier environment, a gel pad is gonna block a little bit more noise on the outside. It also has the benefit of reducing how much noise leaks out of your headset. So if you're playing next to someone who doesn't necessarily want to hear your game, the gel pad is gonna help cut some of that noise down. It's not perfect, but it is an improvement. And that's just one of the pros of going with a heavier, denser pad like this. Now I like to show pad compression tests because I wanna check if the compression is uniform or not, or if it distorts on your ear because this is what you feel. And the stock Nova pads are actually great. They actually compress outward more, so you still maintain that level of comfort in your ear. That's why they've been so comfortable to wear. You go with the freeze pad, it is slightly different. It's a little bit more symmetrical, which is more normal. This isn't a bad thing. Um, it does compress a little bit on the inside, but because of the clamp force of the Novas, the most compression you're gonna get is about one or two millimeters, and honestly, it's not gonna make a big difference. It's not gonna shrink up and start hugging your ear. I will say on that note, because this pad is slightly more narrow, I do feel a little bit of contact behind the tops of my ear. Nothing painful at all, it's just present. I know it's there. On this, it kind of disappears a little bit. However, with this pad being as compliant as it is and the way it compresses, it reduced some of the hard points of clamping pressure. I actually thought the Novas were one of the more comfortable headsets I reviewed in the past six months. They really are an exceptionally made uh, product as far as pad and comfort goes. However, it's more noticeable, especially on the Nova One, which seems to have a slightly higher clamp force, is I get a little bit of jaw pressure right here in stock form. So I was a little nervous that going with a slightly thicker pad, if that would actually increase the clamp too much and make it uncomfortable. The difference in thickness is so minimal, it didn't really do that. However, it did alleviate the jaw pressure I was getting. So on the Nova One, it is a more noticeable improvement there for comfort. As the clamp force lightens up on a couple of the other models, it just might be my model uh, variance, if you will, for build quality. But on the lighter clamp, the difference was less noticeable. However, both pads still very comfortable there. And then when you get to the pad compression of the Nova Pro, well, this is a fairly similar thing to the stock pad. It's just a leatherette. You can see the seal maintain and how it kind of starts turning into a nice donut. Um, that is what it is. It's not gonna, again, impact your sound negatively with because of how minimal the clamp is. That's just how it looks when it's on your ear. So now we're gonna get into sound quality and there's a few ways to look at this. There's the whole subjective side and what people may notice. There's the measured stuff and then we'll talk about EQ tuning. So. Um, I'll be honest, surprisingly, on the Nova 1 and the Nova 3, which is the USB variant, um, I noticed very little change in sound quality. It was almost the same as the stock pad. So with that being said, if you're concerned about how it impacts those, you can pretty much plug and forget. That's especially beneficial on something like the Nova 1 because it's an analog headset. You have very limited tuning options unless you use additional software whether it's sonar on PC or like the Atmos app for Xbox, but PlayStation owners wouldn't have that capability. So if you like the Nova One sound, but you're playing on PlayStation, you can switch to the freeze pad and still maintain nearly identical sound performance. I will show measurements. The same thing translates to the Nova 3. However, you can do some tuning, which I will do here shortly in the video to kind of make the most of it. Um, even though the Nova 7 uses the same pad technology, it's tuned slightly different and the way it interacts with this baffle design and all this other stuff, long story short, there is a noticeable shift in sound quality. It wasn't terrible, but I did find that I wanted to tune it a little bit to get back some of that punchiness and detail that I like on the Nova 7. On the Nova Pro is a significant difference in sound quality. Um, I tend to EQ things, if you haven't known from my other videos, and mainly to fix some issues I have with headsets. If you have a really good headphone, I don't believe in doing excessive EQ because that's kind of what makes a high-end headphone unique. However, on gaming headsets, they may not be tuned to your liking. That's why we EQ, or some people do it for footsteps, or making engines have a stronger hum to them or vibration 
you know, when you're playing a racing game. So I want to talk about measurements and EQ uh, tuning now to get the most of it. And then hopefully by the end, you'll know if this is the right path for you or not. Now I took a different tuning philosophy with this lineup than I have in the past. And that's partly because I think how some of these headsets are used. So some people may be buying these for console use or console plus PC use. So what I did this time was I did the tune to the best that I could on the DAC, meaning that the Nova 3, the Nova 7 and the Nova Pro, there's internal settings you can save to the headset to make it perform and sound better. And by doing that, you'll get the best benefit you can for console. So if you play on PlayStation or Xbox, you'll be good to go. And then I use Sonar to fine tune it for the applicable headsets to just give you the little extra edge on PC that just simply isn't attainable without using Sonar. So on the Nova 1, I went straight to a Sonar tune because there's no DAC built in. The Nova 3, I'm doing a DAC tune plus Sonar and the same thing with the Nova 7 and Pro. So with that being said, I'm gonna start with all the DAC tuning for the Nova 3, 7 and Pro first, and then we'll get into Sonar. Now, again, when I mentioned this earlier, comparing the stock pad to a freeze pad, you can see the frequency response is nearly identical. You have almost the same bass characteristics. Even the treble energy is almost the same. Now there's a couple extra spikes around 10,000 Hertz, but overall it's a very comparable sounding pad, which is great because it minimizes the impact it has on the game, music listening, etc. Now, if you look at how the Nova 3 sounds compared to a Nova 7 stock, you can see that the slight pink line here, the Nova 7 has a different bass performance and slightly different treble, and there's a bigger impact when you switch to the freeze pad. So the green line is what happens when I put the freeze pad on, and you can see I lose some bass energy and it does negatively impact the treble as well. Overall, there's just a reduction in volume, so we're gonna do some things with the DAC to improve that. And a similar thing happens when you look at the Nova Pro. Going to a freeze pad does reduce some of that bass. Overall, the treble remains surprisingly similar, but you do lose some of that energy and punchiness that you might be used to because we're changing pad material. So with that being said, let's look at tuning. So if you wanna freeze this here, this is the tune that I use with the Wicked Cushion Pad on the Nova 3, uh, again, just using the DAC tune before Sonar. So we have bass, 64 hertz at plus 1.5, 180 hertz at minus three, 500 hertz at plus 1.5, 1K or 1000 hertz at minus 0.5. I left 3K alone, and then at 11K, I have it boosted by 0.5. That's gonna put it in a really good state even before we use sonar. So now let's take a look at the Nova 7. Now, instead of verbalizing every change I made with the Nova 7, just pause it right here. This is gonna give you a great tune. So if you're using this for console gaming and PC, this is already gonna sound great if you put the freeze pad on and set the EQ up this way. So then looking at the Nova Pro, I made a very different tune here, of course. This is gonna make it great, honestly, for console gaming, it sounds amazing, and it also sounds great for music as well. I made some changes to the bass and some significant adjustments in the treble region because there's a different pad material here with a different bass EQ. And overall, the sound quality is great with the freeze pad setting it up this way. So now let's look at Sonar. So now we're gonna spend a brief moment looking at Sonar. This tuning is to go in addition to your DAC tune with exception of the Nova 1, because again, there's no DAC on it. So um, let's start with the Nova 1 with that being said. Now the first thing we're adjusting is the bass, and you can see here I have low shelving. This means that I am boosting bass as a whole and not one particular point. So, and that is affected by your cue, but make sure you select low shelving, 3.8 decibel gain at 38 hertz with a cue of 0.5. Going to 120 hertz, I have minus four decibel drop with a Q of 0 0.707. At 492 hertz, I have a three decibel lift, again with a Q of 0 0.707. And then at 4,700 hertz, or 4.7 kilohertz, I have a two decibel gain at 0 0.707. I wanted to preserve some of the unique sound quality of the Nova lineup. I wanted to keep some of that punchy bass and not make it sound too dull or not fun. These aren't really intended for music listening as much in my opinion, so I wanted to preserve some of that emotion and, and immersion that you get playing some fun games while not sacrificing detail, while also not hurting your ears. So that wraps up the Nova 1. Now going into the Nova 3, I'm not gonna do as much adjustment on the lower frequencies because I got really close to what I like just using the DAC that's built into it. So all I did was at 150 hertz, we have minus two dB at 0.707. At 600 hertz, we have a one decibel lift at 4Q, so a pretty narrow target, but it's to fix a little null that I noticed earlier. We did some more aggressive tuning in the treble. So at 4.4 uh, kilohertz or 4,400 hertz, two decibel gain with a Q of two. Uh, looking at the next one, you have a six decibel gain at 5,100 hertz or 5.1 kilohertz with a Q of 3.5, then negative three dB at six kilohertz, 
with a Q of two and negative three dB at eight kilohertz, basically, with a Q of two. Doing so kind of takes a little bit of the edge off, but also fills a dip that I wasn't a fan of, and that makes the Nova 3 sound absolutely amazing for gaming on PC. Now the Nova 7 tune is probably one of the easiest ones you'll see for sonar tuning once you've done the DAC tune with the freeze pad. I was really happy with the sound quality just by tuning with DAC, and I wouldn't even feel that I'm missing out with anything without sonar. However, with that being said, I made almost zero changes. These are just some default bands that are all at zero here. So all I have to do to make it sound to what I thought sounded great was at 300 hertz, boost it by 3 dB with a Q of 1.5. And by doing so, you make the bass and bleeding into the mid-range nice and accurate and smooth, and you get a great sound quality both for music and gaming. Now, I actually tried targeting the Harman curve with the Nova 7 because I had so much flexibility on EQ. So I'm gonna go through these really quick. Just uh, feel free to pause it right here. I'm not gonna read them all out. If you want just a second EQ profile, build this as a secondary and see what you like. This is probably a little bit better suited for music, but not as much for gaming. Now I made quite a few more changes with the freeze pad on the Nova Pro. So uh, with that being said, let's take a look at the sonar tune. So you have a negative, negative two decibel drop at 30 Hertz with a Q of 1.5, plus three dB at 56 Hertz with a Q of one, minus one dB at 120 Hertz with a Q of two, 2.5 dB lift at 345 Hertz with a Q of one, 1.5 dB gain at 1.4 kilohertz with a Q of 1.2, negative 2 dB at 2.82 kilohertz or 2,820 hertz with a Q of 0 0.707, five decibel lift at 4.4 kilohertz or 4,400 hertz, Q of one, and then a four decibel drop at eight kilohertz with a Q of seven. I found that the end result of that uh, works exceptionally well for music listening too. So whether you're gaming or listening to music, you're gonna get all the detail without any of the ear fatigue, but it also preserves some of the more natural sounds that certain instruments or voices can have, um, making the Nova Pro a great option for mixed content use. So yes, yet another long video just about ear pads. There's honestly so much to discuss with pads. Pads are like the biggest change you can make to a headset outside of like drastic EQ. But as far as physical mods go, pads can change the sound a lot. Keeping it simple though, pads can be fun. Now on the Nova 1 and 3, you can literally just swap it and go have a good time. So if that's all you care about, probably hopefully you skip to the end of this to get that final verdict. Um, but I like them great on that. The comfort was always fine, but I think the biggest benefit I got, in addition to the really cool looks, because I love like the 90s white on the Nova 1 in white, um, is the reduction of pressure on my jaw. So it was a little bit more comfortable for me. When you step up to the Nova 7, I loved the Nova 7 with stock pads. Um, I find that the upgraded pads aren't hurting it much at all as far as imaging goes, but again, you get the benefits of the gel. It still works really well for glasses. It's not really a drawback per se. It's more of like you're adding your own custom flair to your headset, and it is a little bit more uh, comfortable and cooler for those shorter bursts of gaming. Long term, it's comparable, so at least you're not making it worse. On the Nova Pro, I actually think the pad is a benefit more than um, any other headset here, only because the leatherette pads on the Nova Pro get warm. And although gel isn't perfect, it is a noticeable improvement in long-term comfort, in addition to making it kind of cool and unique. Again, just kind of going back to that whole thing. So it's up to you if you think pads are worth it or not. I think for $30, even before the discount, it's a good option, especially if you're just looking to customize it. And the biggest takeaway here is you can swap pads and not totally kill your sound quality. It can still be very enjoyable with or without EQ in a lot of these cases. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this review helpful and I will see you at the next one.